Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. Now we know that the vaccines work well enough that the virus stops with every vaccinated person. Very fine people on both sides. You mean the laptop is now another Russia, Russia, Russia hope? We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go. You know the you know the thing. It's a lie on a news network, it, and it's it, a lie that's a willing. That's that's a lie that they're conscious of. Evening viewers and welcome to tonight's episode of Grumpy Old Men. I'm Pinky as usual and of course we have Grumpy. Um, G'day, welcome yeah. along. And what are we talking about tonight, Greg? We've got a couple of subjects. The first one, we're going to talk about planes that aren't playing yeah. very, very well. Yeah. And we're going to get into a bit of Australian politics as well because Elbo, Elbo's always in the news currently. At the moment. And um, if you don't know who Elbo is, our, he's our Prime Minister. Uh, Al- Anthony Albanese. Mm. And we were talking about earlier about nicknames. Yeah. You know, Albo's kind of a, a chummy, matey type, yeah. you know. Which we should just take it away from him. Yeah, exactly. This is Australia. We give nicknames to people that we like. Mm. You know, shorten yeah. their name, lengthen their name, create a whole new yeah. name. Yeah. You know, I went, to, I went to school with a kid that fell out of a tree and ripped his finger off. We called him Niner for four years. <laughs> so that, that's Australia. That's what we do. So, uh, yeah. Ah, we just call him Dick. That'll Segway do. already. The clown. Dick, yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Yeah, okay, well, let's talk about uh, these planes that seem to yeah. not be you know, flying very well yeah. lately. Boeing, Boeing gone. Yeah, very gone. So <clears throat> if you've been watching the news lately, you would have heard of uh, John Burnett, who is the whistleblower yes. for Boeing. Who, who was, was, the, whistle, the, was yeah. the whistleblower, yeah. Found in, found in a car park, apparently. Um, yeah, so, okay, so what? how much do you know about Boeing's most recent history probably the last five years you know, uh, a bit. I know a fair bit yeah I mean mainly what's been happening here in Australia there's been a whole bunch of maintenance issues with their planes yeah maintenance not being up to scratch as well as tyres exploding and engines catching on fire mm. um, things like tyres exploding tyres exploding it's kind of I wouldn't say common, but it does happen. Sure. Yeah. But um, a whole wheel yeah. coming off shouldn't happen. Yeah, that's right. And when it explodes to the side, and you know, yeah, yeah, that's a different thing altogether. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah. You know, those type of things, but it seems to get, be getting a bit more often. Yeah. That's the it's issue. also, some of them, some of the issues have been pretty serious as well. Yeah. Like if you go back to 2018, um, there was a, a um, Lion Air flight um, that f- I think it flew for about half an hour before it crashed. Yeah. Um, that was a that was a Boeing that had a few technical problems um, with its M M MCAS, I believe it's called, or SMAC. Uh, yeah, MCAS, which mm. is their their manoeuvring, basically their manoeuvring software. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, what had happened there? They they had the um, the seven three seven Max for quite some time. Um, that particular edition, which was the Max eight, um, they put in a larger motor. And the motor was in a different, or it, it changed the weight um, position of the plane, so um, its attack angle changed and all that sort of stuff. And they, and they, they had software um, that Boeing had developed that would that was used for controlling the attack angle of the plane. So basically, the, 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 the whether the nose is up or down and diving and what have you. Um, and they left that program to try to counter the weight of the new engines, and it wasn't very successful um, and the plane ended up crashing and when the when that software it, it basically glitched out and thought that the plane was dipping when it wasn't or oh, it was geez, raising yeah. when it wasn't or whatever it was and the pilots were fighting that um, and they weren't able to, to get the plane back under control and it happened again like six months later with another flight um, I think it was Air Indonesia maybe mm-hmm. um, same thing happened so was it a coding error or something yeah something to do with that program mm. but the thing is um Boeing kept that program very quiet. They didn't tell pilots. They didn't tell anybody that the program even existed, this this software even existed. So <clears throat> when they were fighting against this program, they didn't even know what it was they were really fighting against, you know, in, right, in the yeah, plane. Yeah. So they, they, otherwise they could have just turned it off and overridden it or what have you, but they couldn't because they didn't know how any of that worked. Because um, Boeing kept that all very hush-hush because it was IP protected. So they didn't want um, um, Airbus to get that information so they didn't just didn't tell anybody, including their pilots. Did they know this was causing the issues? Yeah, because and they um, left it. Yeah, because the test pilots that were that had flown that plane prior um, brought it to their attention and said, "Hey, we've got a problem with with this system. 
um, trying to override other systems and glitching out and all that sort of stuff. And they just said, oh, it'll be fine. We'll, we'll, we'll look into it and we, you know, we'll, we'll resolve mm. it. And they never did. And then after that first crash, they brought it up again and said, look, we got to, this is a very serious problem. It really needs to be addressed. Yeah. Um, and then it, I think it was like five months later or something like that, the, the second accident with the same, mm. same issue and it still wasn't resolved. Um, so, yeah, both of those those plane crashes took about 130 lives each or something. Oh, geez, pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty big disasters. Mm. So that's really – that's when I first started paying attention to Boeing because before that it was like, oh, Boeing, oh, it's just another plane company. Mm. But, but yeah, so – A few years ago, um, Qantas here in Australia, well, worldwide with their planes, they started shipping out um, uh, their maintenance to other countries. They stopped mm. doing it here in Australia. Yeah. And then we started getting issues here. Yeah. as well in their planes they were sourcing it out to i think it was the philippines or something yeah like that. somewhere yeah. like that philippines yeah. and maybe india i think yeah something like that yeah. yeah but it was overseas then all of a sudden the quality dropped dr- yeah dramatically. well that's one of the things yeah. that um that john burnett brought to their attention through because john burnett was with boeing for 30 years mm. um and i think it was about 12 or 13 years ago he got promoted to a new division where he was in charge of these 737 maintenance and so that was this really was his his field yeah um, and he put in a lot of complaints about the staff that, that were servicing these planes. They just didn't seem to know what they were doing and they were pretty useless. So he put in a lot of complaints about that. But, um, yeah, he was he was aware of all these maintenance problems and he brought them all to their attention and they really did very little, if anything, at all. I think it was all – at the end of the day, it's all about money. Oh, it always you know, is, it yeah. Al- always is. Yeah. So, yeah. Remember that car um – it was years ago. I had a bad... I can't remember what car it was, but I had an issue with the fuel tank. If it, if it got re-ended, it would explode. Yeah, it was the... Was it the, the Vega, I think it oh, was? I can't or one of those, one of those little, little yeah, hatchbacky yeah. things. Because it had the fuel tank directly behind the back That's seat. That's right. So That's if someone right. ran into the back of it, they just it explode. explode. And that was before yeah. they had that, that mesh inside <clears> the tanks that stopped them from exploding. Yep. And uh, the bean counters at the company decided it was cheaper for them to actually pay out... Yeah, um, that's right. The suits, the lawsuits, then it was to actually fix the Change problem. Change production because yeah. there were so many. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's that's pretty much exactly what happened with Boeing. Mm. So um, after that second crash, um, they grounded all the Boeing 737s around the world, and there were, which there's hundreds of. Um, so they were all grounded right across the world. And their stock share plummeted. They, dropped mm. to, they lost like 50% of their share portfolio, of their share value. Yeah. Um, and then they just, you know, started addressing the issues then. But when they brought out the Max 9, um, which was the next, you know, variation to that, it was supposed to have been all improved. Because one of the – that that um, software problem probably wouldn't have been a problem if they hadn't have changed the engine size. So the, so the, the engine in the, the Max 8 was larger and it was further forward. So it shifted all the weight inside the plane. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't, I guess, calibrated. Yeah, correct. It, yeah, because yeah, it was well. The purpose of that it was like a it's like a software program that <coughs> that it, it picks up on um, <coughs> variations to the flight pattern. So if you're if the plane's flying and all of a sudden the nose starts to dip, this program was supposed to go, hey, um, you know, your you, your nose is dipping. We need to trim and and get you back into position and what have you. So um, that's what it was supposed to do. <coughs> now you can imagine if you've got a big shift of weight towards the front of the plane. The plane's going to nosedive, so their expectation was that that program would recognise that that dive, that dip mm-hmm. of the nose, and counter that. So they thought, oh, we'll just leave it up to the the software to take care yeah. of it. And it wasn't you, you couldn't rely on the software for that. It was the software is really designed for sudden movements, not a, a long term, you know, disproportionate weight. So mm. it wasn't really designed to work in that manner. So that's why it was glitching and playing up. So. That's a big part of the problem. And then when they brought out the the Max Nine, which is the the next generation, that's the one that we all saw on the news in in at the start of this year. I think it was in January of this year, um, with the door issue. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that one made the news. So um, what happens with those those particular planes? So they they they're purchased by different companies all around the world and then branded, and each company sets up its own protocol for safety. So they might use the front two doors and the rear doors and there might be two other doors that they don't ever use. So they, instead of having a door, they put in basically a fake door, they call it a plug. So 
the incident in January was a plug that had been fitted and they didn't put the bolts in. Oh, yeah. So this thing took off. I think it was from Pasadena, maybe? Anyway, it was somewhere in the USA. This thing took off. Atlanta Air, it was an Atlanta Air flight. And it got up in the air and the door just, or the, the plug just ripped out of the side of the plane. So there was all this footage going around of these people, absolutely terrified, sitting there, you know, oh, everyone yeah. has a phone, they're all filming each other going, whoa, a big hole in the side of the plane. Um, but no one was killed, was No one was like, killed, yeah. no, no one was injured. They, mm. they, they turned around and came straight back. So that entire little flight was only about 30 minutes and they were back on the ground. That would have been a terrifying thing. Oh, minutes. could you imagine? Yeah. Your, heart, you, you just, your heart would stop, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah, I, I get terrified when the wind starts to vibrate. Yeah, and I've oh. gone through a bit of turbulence. I'm kind of used to the turbulence; it doesn't bother me so much now. Mm. I remember the first couple of times it was scary. Yeah, it's nasty. and then when you see the wings shake and you kind of go, you know, I um, oh, oh, <laughs> segue sort of. Yeah. Um, so years and years ago, I used to fly around the country um, teaching in the tire industry, and um, <laughs> I took up to Brisbane one time. So we we went up on this. Huge. I think it was a Boeing. Anyway, you didn't sell tyres to Qantas, did you? No. <laughs> no. Um, should have. That was the um, ransom note you were going yeah, to send out. <laughs> and <laughs> they never paid. That's right. Um, when we got to the other end, we get it, got into a little um, 20-seater Saab, this tiny little thing. Yeah. And like, There's two rows on one side and one row on the other. And whoever was next to the window was sat like that because the fuse lines yeah. were so small. Um and we hit turbulence and this thing was going up and down. I look out the window and you could see the wings just oh, flapping geez, up and down. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. and I am not a good flyer. You go, you can ask my wife. I, I yeah. shit myself at the smallest little thing. And I'm, <laughs> anyway, I had this woman sitting beside me and she's like a bit of a nervous wreck. And we're thinking, oh, this is, she's a bit nervous. And I'm watching these wings. I'm going, oh. and all of a sudden she reaches around and grabs my arm. And she goes, we're going to fucking die. And I'm like, what? I'm going, no. And I'm trying to reassure this woman. I'm going, yeah. and I'm shitting myself. I'm trying to reassure. I'm going, no, it's okay. We're going to be fine. And she goes, no, you don't understand. My husband's a pilot. I know. I fly every week. We're going to fucking die. <laughs> and I'm like, Jesus Christ. So I was just, oh, absolutely did, did shit they, myself. Did they have a domestic fight earlier or something? I don't know. But, the, but the, the stewardess was at the front of the plane and she was just, she had that big fake, plastic smile like nothing was wrong and <laughs> you could see behind the smile she was shitting herself yeah. as well and I thought fuck we're not going to make Jeez, it yeah. but yeah we landed and it was all fine but yeah it's, <laughs> planes are a scary a scary thing <laughs> no it was a Saab uh, okay. yeah a little Saab oh yeah you did say yeah. that yeah but um, but yeah so back to where we were so um, so when they when they upgraded to the Max 9 they were supposed to have fixed all these problems with the position of the, the motor and the weight of the motor yeah. and what have you plus um, I'm not 100% sure on this but I think from my understanding, they were using the old wiring harness that would have worked with the old motor. So rather than just create all new wiring, they just, you know, a bit of duct tape and a bit of mm. twist and turn, you know. They, they actually use a lot of duct tape. Oh, they do, yeah. It's but, um, scaringly too much. Yeah, yeah. it is. But, um, but yeah, so they, they basically didn't rewire anything for the new motor. They didn't counterbalance anything. They just shoved it on in there. So even when the Max 9 came out, they still had a lot of problems. So... Um, yeah, and it was only about 2021, so a couple of years after that, that second incident that they were allowed to, you know, take off again and they weren't grounded anymore. And then, you know, within a very short period of time, there's been nothing but maintenance issues. Yeah, yeah so, correct. Yeah. And but, the whistleblower, well... Well, yeah, so... Um, he epstein himself. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he did... Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. Didn't he kind of allegedly? Yeah, allegedly. Yeah, our, sh our whole show's about allegedly. Uh, our lawyers told us we have to start saying allegedly. Yeah. So allegedly, just so you know, everything from this point forward to the end of time mm. is allegedly. <laughs> uh, our lawyers tend to be our partners. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, honey. Don't say this. No more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it did, didn't like just not um, not not too much early before the incident that. He actually said he wasn't suicidal or something? Yeah, totally. Yeah. He was on the TV and he said, um, if anything happens to me, I didn't kill myself. Yeah. Doesn't get any clearer than that, Jeez, does it? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it, it still came for him. They, they, they allegedly framed it as a suicide mm. and he was found in a car park. Oh, jeez. So who yeah. tops themselves in a car park? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, was, and, and he'd, he'd a had gun a, wound, was it? A, pardon? A gun wound? I believe so, yeah. yeah. So he, he'd um, been through a deposition with... Um, I think he'd been through the deposition with both his own lawyers and 
Boeing's lawyers. Mm. So he'd been through those depositions. And I think there was more questioning to come before they actually went to court through the dep- deposition process. Um, so, yeah, he was off and running. He was, yep, let's go, let's, you know, mm. ask me what, you know, so they, because, you know, they had dep- depositions work, so they got a feel of what the you know, argument would be in, in court. Mm. Um, so he went through all that process and was ready to go. Yeah. And then next thing you know, he's, yeah. he's apparently, allegedly committed suicide. It's, so It sounds very, very squ- uh, scary. So, um, yeah, but he brought we, all- we have a promo code for Australian um, trains, so, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no. Yeah, so um, a lot of the things that he, he brought to light, you know, were pretty serious issues. Like one of the things that he, I'm not sure which country it was, whether it was India or, I've got a feeling it was India, that's why I keep going back to India. But um, there was issues with parts, right? So what they were doing was Boeing didn't want to spend too much money. So they'd take off a part that was worn out. and Refurbish it? it, it, it well, they didn't even get that far. They would go into an area to be refurbished. And he was reporting... Um, uh, John Bennett was reporting that the parts were disappearing from that area and at one stage they thought someone was stealing parts but the, we're talking parts the size of your average bedroom Yeah. so it's not like someone just shoved one in the back of their car so he's like where are these parts going and it turns out that they were just going over wh- whichever this maintenance crew was just going over there and going oh I can't find a new one that one will do and putting it back in the plane jeez yeah Wow. <laughs> so, so, but he reported the thing yeah. is he reported all this. He was aware of these things, and this is what it was all about. He brought this to the table, and they didn't want to do anything about it. Yeah. Oh, what happened with the hearings that he, he, he could no longer attend? Well, I don't know. I mean, he, he was he was the, the key witness, so I'm assuming it's all been dropped. Mm. So, which was yeah. the goal for him, I guess, in the end, wasn't it? Yeah, correct, yeah. correct, yeah. Which, which, which is why you would think that maybe yeah. allegedly suicide wasn't really allegedly mm. suicide. <laughs> but you've got, but you've got. Um, there's only really four major aeroplane manufacturers. <clears throat> pardon me, which is Boeing, Airbus. Um, I can't think of the other two names now, but they're the two that do the big commercial planes. The other two. Uh, I can't think of the name of the other two companies now, but they do all the small stuff. Mm. Like, you know, when people talk about, I've got my private jet, you know, it seats 12. Okay, yeah. They do all that stuff. But for the big stuff, it's really only the two. And um, Airbus has an equivalent or fairly equivalent model to the 737 MAX, mm. and it's a much better quality plane. Mm. But All the problems that are in the 737? Yeah. Oh, the no, there's, a, there's, been a, there's been a few other problems, but mm. primarily it's the 737 yeah, range. Right. The, the 737 MAX, which has got the larger motor and capacity, the engine and capacity, um, and seating capacity. Um, but, yeah, each – I think it's from about 7 and then 8 and 9. So I think we're currently at 9 is the current edition of the, the, the MAX, 737 MAX. So um, – because I think the 737 has been – it's been quite a few decades that the 737's been around. Um, but the the Airbus equivalent is a much better plane. Um, but the reason that Boeing, you know, this is why Boeing don't do really good maintenance because they're trying to keep their costs down to compete with a better quality plane, mm. you know. So I, I feel like, you know, when you're competing against someone who's better quality, does it need to be price-driven? But then I guess... You know, some of the companies like, um, you know, like Lion Air or any any other company that's buying these planes, they're not just buying one plane. It's not like mm. when we go down the road and buy a car, they'll buy, you know, a hundred planes. And sometimes yeah. these contracts are yeah. worth billions of dollars. So, hey, correct. you know, a I mean, few percent any, is a lot of money. Anyone that runs a business knows that <coughs> you need to cut down your overhead so it doesn't um, eat into your profits. Mm. And you start doing that through either um, your staff wages, uh, the amount of staff you have, and of course your running costs. Yeah, and which includes parts. You know, absolutely. But yeah. but what you got to understand too about Boeing, though, like as you said, you got to cut down your, your your expenses and your running costs so that you stay profitable. But they're also like people probably don't realise this, but they're one of the largest um, suppliers of military planes to the US. So everyone automatically thinks, you know, Lockheed Martin and what have you, because they have very specialised planes that we all get to hear about all the yeah. time. But, but really, um, Boeing, um, they've got their refuelling planes, or the ta- I think they call them tankers is what they call mm. them. Um, they've got uh, fighter mm. planes. They've got all sorts of stuff. Don't they've they also um, source out their engines as well? I think they make engines for other... For other companies, yeah. Because yeah. well, they're, they're the two big players, yeah. them and Airbus. So, yeah. So, but the F-A-18 Hornet, 
which that's a that's a Boeing plane. Mm. So there's quite a few that you know um, that get supplied to the military, and then of course also um, passenger planes for the military. So Boeing is probably the largest supplier of you know airplanes and whatever. To, yeah, yeah, to the U.S. Army, or U.S. Uh, Air, um, military. So you know that's a that's got to be a massive contract, you know. So yeah, that's I think that's why you know at the end of the day whether whether um, John Burnett did take his own life or not, um, I don't think it'll ever get investigated because obviously Boeing and the American government, you know, they're like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. What are you going to do when it comes to money? Um, uh, there are so many stories of companies cutting the costs, putting people um, uh, lives into, da- uh, into danger as well yeah. as their staff. Yeah. It's, it's forever. It happens all the time. Mm. Um, so what's the conclusion with that? What's going on? Well, I yeah. don't know. I mean, now we've got more issues with maintenance again, so I don't know. I don't think it will ever really come to a, a conclusion because yeah. they're so buddy-buddy with you know, the, the US government. Yeah. <coughs> Same reason that yeah. we'll never find out whether Epstein really did it. We'll never find oh. out. We'll never really find out who went to his island. The cameras didn't work, you know, and um, yeah. you know, it's, it's typical. We're, we're the hunter. The whole thing's a we'll, bit. We'll sus. never know what was on Hunter's laptop. Oh, I think we do. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but but you know what I mean. It's like you know, it's just another yeah. one of those things that mm. you know, it'll get mm. pushed aside. Do you think the exposure they got, they would now be very cautious on what they're doing? They will actually step up the um, well, maintenance? Because they've been I, kind of exposed. I would have thought so in 2019 yeah. with a 50% market drop in mm. shares. So you would think that, you know, they've just lost half their wealth overnight because of a second incident. You think that they're, mm. that, well, what's the contributing factor here? Safety. Okay, let's fix safety. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. So, what does it take? It, it, it you've got hundreds of deaths. You've got massive drops in market share. I think that this time around, I think in January, when the when they had the issue with the plug, um, I think since then they've dropped by. I think it's about another nine or ten percent in market share, which is not as not as drastic as the the one from twenty nineteen. But that still shows which trajectory they're yeah, on. Quite a bit. And you think that you know. A ten percent shift in market share and the risk of people's deaths again. Mm. We here we are again in the spotlight. You think that safety would be an issue by now? Yeah. Um, but you know what? Let's not fix the planes. Mm. Let's just get rid of the guy who knows all about yeah, the issues. Correct. Yeah. Right. But allegedly, I, I, yeah. I bet you the bean <laughs> counters are in there as well. Like, it, like oh, I said earlier, yeah, for they've sure. gone. Took, took on the little calculator and gone. Ah, eh, no worries. We'll just keep going. You know. Yeah, it's no a similar problem. principle. It'd be mm. cheaper to just pay people off and, you know. Or pay kind off, of allegedly... Yeah, pay off the families of yeah. anyone who's passed away in, in, yeah. a, in a plane accident, Shut allegedly. Yeah, then, yeah. Uh, you know. yeah, don't sue us. we got no, no money. we got no money. <laughs> no, we've got to... Yeah. 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 Oh, why don't we bring everybody back to Australia? Yes, um, back to Elbo, home. Elbo just can't seem to get out of the news. Yeah. Talking about planes, Elbo's our Prime Minister who spends most of the time overseas. Yeah. He's... he's I was about to say presidency, <laughs> prime minister, Shirip. Shirip. <laughs> his ministry. Uh, yeah, his ministry. Most of the time he's spent overseas, you know, visiting uh, other countries and pushing the diplomacy of Australia. But um, lately he's been in the news for all the wrong reasons. If you've been following our other episodes, he's unfortunately he's, you know, really bitly involved with a fight with X as well as uh, also trying to censor Australians simply because we want to use X. And that's turned out to a bit, a bit of a bitter fight. All sorts of government departments have uh, jumped in there as well. And uh, one of the things he um, said last week, and I've got a little X clip coming up, is um, he doesn't like people making memes of him. Yeah. Because he's a freaking little baby. So um, let's have a look and a listen to what he actually said. Media uh, platforms uh, have a responsibility uh, to make sure... Uh, that uh, misinformation isn't got out there. I noticed today, for example, on uh, on the way up here, uh, they've removed uh, various uh, sites uh, that were up uh, containing uh, fake images of myself, oh. uh, superimposed <laughs> on on other people. Uh, that's the sort of thing that is 
uh, going on on social media. Social media has a responsibility uh, to do the right thing here. <coughs> What an absolute pussy! Joe, it makes it yeah. sound. It makes it sound like that's the only thing yeah. that happens on social media. Like I've never looked at this social media stuff, but from what I understand, that's what goes yeah. on. Yeah, it's like that's that's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, of course we're gonna um, do what he asks because we can't put up any memes of uh, Albo, of course, because we don't want to offend him. So let's let's have a bit of fun the and whole, actually offend him. <laughs> The whole world is putting up memes yeah. in Elbow. Oh, exactly. <laughs> well, we have to miss out. We've, we've become the butt of many jokes now oh, because of mate, uh, what's been internationally, going on. Internationally, the things that I'm hearing internationally, people yeah. are calling us a communist country now. Correct. And, you yeah. know, the next North Korea. And, yeah. yeah. All right, let's Crazy have another times. one. Let's have a look at this, dude. Media uh, platforms uh, have a responsibility <laughs> uh, to make sure uh, that uh, misinformation isn't got out there. I noticed today, for example... On, uh, on the way up here, uh, they've removed uh, various uh, sites uh, that were up uh, containing uh, fake images of myself. Uh, <laughs> That's basically what they said, but I had him dressed up as Hitler. <laughs> but Hitler seems to be a very common theme uh, to meme him at the moment. Jeez, I wonder why. Could it be the fact that he's trying to stop us from well, having free you know, speech? Yeah. 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 Um, him and um, his buddy at uh, his safety. Yeah. Well, he's he's another very cute one. No, 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 no. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's so funny, isn't it? Yeah. Um. So, you know, not only were there videos, but there was actually this lovely little photo of him. Don't you just love it? <laughs> Yeah. But is that a meme or is that an actual photo? <laughs> <laughs> Some, I think somebody snuck in through the window yeah, or something, yeah. yeah. So, of course, my um, X feed just got absolutely flooded with yeah. uh, with these type of memes. And I, I love that type of thing. I, I love it when we stick it to the man. Yeah. Especially this one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, so anyway... Um, so he had a bit of a cry about it all and we kind of just moved on and uh, then we decided, yeah, we're not finished yet. So we had to do another one. <laughs> and this, this one's probably my favourite on uh, X at the moment. Let's have a look at that one. But this bloke thinks he's above the Australian law, that he's above common decency. And I tell you what, uh, I say to Elon Musk uh, that he is so out of touch. The irony of that, yeah. so out of touch. Yeah. Elon Musk is out of touch. Yeah. His clues, he doesn't even recognise that the world is changing yeah. and people are waking up and starting to see everything. Oh, we see yeah. through this whole illusion. That's, yeah. what, that's what we're saying in the last episode is, you know, yeah. it, it's it's so backwards, you know. Yeah. Like we said last time, it, we don't want to go too far into the whole, yeah. um, you know, censorship stuff again. But, you know, as we said before, you've got... A guy here in Australia who's making all these claims about, you know, Elon Musk putting up whatever he likes, taking down whatever he likes and, and having complete censorship and control over this platform and having the ability to say what he wants and do what he wants and that that's wrong and that he shouldn't be allowed to control the people. You're like, hang on a minute. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's the you know exactly the same situation as uh, what's happening in the USA. The Democrats are saying um, Trump's going to be a dictator, yeah. and you know he's, he's going to jail the the, um, the Democrats. Talk about the kings of gaslighting. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and yeah. the big meme is uh, the Democrats are doing exactly what uh, they accuse Trump of yeah. um, well, supposed to have done. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Is like. I don't know if politics has always been as bad as it is now or whether mm -hmm. we're just becoming more and more aware. I mean, I know we are becoming more yeah. and more aware, but it just seems like that's the constant. It's yeah. the absolute constant. Yeah. Politics you know? have become a lot more mainstream now than they were, say, yeah. five years ago. Well, Specifically yeah. COVID. I think COVID changed a lot. Changed everything. Because people spent so much time you know, on the internet trying to entertain yeah. themselves. Doing some homework. And that's yeah. when I started to see a lot of things that I didn't know about. And, yeah. You know, yeah. I started broadening my horizons of what I was watching. Mm. And um, so because because of that, you know, like you said, a lot more people becoming aware. Politics is mainstream. And um, now everyone's a critic 
I mean, look, look at what we do. I know. <laughs> We're sitting here. We're complaining about we what, what do, other people. We used to do other stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, we've known each other for fifteen yeah, years. Exactly. We used to do other stuff, but now yeah. look at us. Yeah, we just we couple just of become old, a fucking yeah. couple of grumpy old men. <laughs> couple of blokes <laughs> sitting at a table moaning and yeah, groaning. Yeah. I've become my dad. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh that's so what true, happened though. there? It's so true. But I'm, I see that everywhere I yeah. go. Like I talk to people on a daily basis and, you know, people are just generally so much grumpier than before. I, I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think so. A lot of anger. Yeah, there and is. I think a lot of it I blame on the media yeah. uh, tearing us apart, as well as the pollies, of course, because yeah. they have their own agendas. And believe me, there is a uniparty. Mm. There is no left and right. Oh, yeah. The it's people the that are in here. control are uni. Yeah. They are not, you know, they're not after your interests yep. whatsoever. It's the same here. I don't well, give a shit anymore. Well, look, I mean, Senator Babbitt mm. um, put out a video the other day um, saying, you know, the deep state's here, basically. Yeah, which exactly. is Which is, you know, it's kind of terrifying because we sort of, because we're in an isolated country, you know, geographically. Yeah. Um, we tend to think that, oh, that's over there and it's not going to really affect us. That's right here, right yeah. now. And that's, you know, we, we sort of, we need that bit of a shock, yeah, I think. Oh, yeah. People are getting that bit of a shock as they're seeing more and more things. Going, I can't believe this is happening. But in reality, it's happening even more and more than you yeah, really, than yeah. you realise, you know. Yeah. And I think it's the same here. Are you in a party? Just you know, you've got a few fringe politicians, but for the you know, I think one of the biggest problems with the political system here is that we you know move on our votes to someone else, you know. I th- yeah, because America is always um, talking about oh, you can't have you know. Y- y- the two-party system doesn't work. You can't have it anymore. But we we don't have the two-party system. Yeah, of course, we've got the major ones, Labor and Liberal. But mm. we've also got all your smaller parties, the Australian Party um, yeah. and so forth. problem with them is, what was the last election? 30% only voted for Elbow, and yet he still won mm. because of this. Because the yeah. spread across Exactly. Them, and then, uh, sure, you vote for, say, the Greens, but then they turn around and allocate those votes mm. to Labor. And you know we're in the same shit anyway. Yeah, you know? that's right. Speaking of greens, now this I is. I thought you were going to say speaking of shit. <laughs> <laughs> we are actually well, talking yeah. about elbow. <laughs> same, same. Um, speaking mm. of greens, now different ter- type of greens. This isn't the political greens. So this is a bit of a segue here. But I, okay, I just yeah. got some interesting, had an interesting conversation with someone the other day that I just wanted to bring to the table. And I, to anyone listening out there, pay attention to what I'm saying. So okay, in a in a park. I think it might have been in Queensland um, through a, a walking park and a bike path through this park. Um, they found sh- um, sharpened spikes. Oh, jeez. I don't know if you heard about this. In, oh. They were embedded in the path so that people on bikes would hit these, have tyre blowouts, maybe fall on them and injure themselves. Pretty nasty stuff. And I thought, oh, my God, I've never heard of such a thing. Now I brought this up with a friend of mine who's a mountain bike rider. Um, and he said, "Yeah, it's not a new thing. It's the Greens, and I don't. And he doesn't mean the Green political party. So I'm not referring to those guys. Just the Greenies that, that don't want bikes. I guess it's more targeted at dirt bikes, but it also affects, you know, mountain bikes and push bikes going through parks and, and nature areas where there are, there are allocated paths for bikes. Really? Right? And I said, I've never heard of this phenomenon. I First, said, I've heard of it. Tell me more. And he said, Well." A, b- a bunch of uh, a bunch of people were caught not that long ago down here in Victoria somewhere in one of the parks putting barbed wire across the the path at neck height. Wow, wow! What the hell's wrong with these people? Is it, this is so that people you know to put people off riding bikes in the in the park. Well, I don't think you'll be riding anymore if you're decapitated. Yeah, it's a bit pretty. It's pretty extreme, I think. You know, so. Anyway, my point is stay vigilant if you're a sort of person that walks yeah. paths, rides bikes through paths, through those sort of areas. Just really stay vigilant yeah. and keep your eyes yeah. open because that's nasty, man. That's, yeah. like, that's just going you know, way too far. That's that's a huge problem amongst you know greenies and the left for me because one of the things uh, they seem to think they can do is the fact they think they have the moral ground yeah. that can do immoral it gives things. Them yeah, yeah, card blank to do whatever That's they right. like, including be, decapitating yeah, bike exactly. riders. I mean, Jesus because, be, simply because they think they have the moral high ground, which they don't. How does that, yeah. you know, and it's, you know, if it was to actually happen and someone was injured in that manner, would the person that put it up then suddenly with the penny drop and they go, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. It's a bit you know, late. But because it hasn't happened yet yeah. to date, um, are they thinking, oh, it's not a big mm, deal? Mm. But they got caught. 
do it. Yeah. So whoever it was that did it here in Melbourne yeah. got caught. So well, it's the same thing with all these stop oil protesters that's happening at the moment, where they sit in the middle of the street. They don't seem to understand that if you want support, you need to protest a different way that's not going to inconvenience General Joe Blow. Yeah, yeah. All they're trying to do is get to work. There's so, been so many instances like mothers trying to take their kids to school, to a hospital. I think there was one instance of a pregnant woman yeah. that was trying to get to a hospital and they stopped and they don't give a shit. There, there's even been ambulances. They say, oh no, we, we move for ambulances. Well, they don't. There's been video evidence yeah. of them blocking yeah. ambulances to get to a hospital. Yeah. If you want to you protest, know. and I totally I have no problems with people protesting, go to the, uh, in front of the Senate, the Parliament House, whatever, yeah. yell and scream, set up your little tents or whatever you want to do, do that. Yeah. Do not start causing problems to yeah. Joe Blow. That's right. You lose uh, um, any type of support. I hate the little buggers because yeah. of that. Oh, go around you know, super gluing themselves yeah. to cars and stuff. I mean, come oh, on. The best at talking about super glue, my segue this time, there was a great... Um, situ- You're not allowed to segue, that's me. Anyway, <laughs> go on. There was, there was a great situation in France, I believe, where they, they, this dude super glued his hands to the, um, the road. Cop walked up and just ripped his yeah, head off. Yeah, that's right. I heard it. Yeah. And, oh, and he started God, crying like a baby. Of course. Oh, I can't yeah, imagine. You imagine yeah. ripping, ripping your skin good, off your palm. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <sighs> serves, serves them right. Yeah. Anyway, we shall segue back, back. Yeah. to where we were. Now, of course, all this situation we've had um, with Albo and the reason we've become the laughing stock um, around the world at the moment is because of... Um, what did he try to do with Billboard Chris? Mm. Now, Billboard Chris is just a gentleman who um, is a, a bit outspoken on one topic only. And that's simply he doesn't want kids transitioning. He wants the kids alone, uh, left alone. Mm. He doesn't care what they do as an older, adult, just like us. Do whatever you want. That's your life. Yeah. You know, Live your life, but leave the children alone. And the great thing is, he's in Australia. Mm. So even though he's been copying a lot of flack from Albo and... Um, uh, e safety and um, that senator from Tasmania what was her name Jackie uh, Lambie yeah, Jack Jackie Lambie yeah. yeah and she yeah she, she um oh God, I don't even want to get to it we, oh, we check did out, whole, we check did out the whole last episode, episode go back yeah. a couple of episodes we yeah did whole episode you'll, you'll there. see you there she's a monster yeah. and um <laughs> he's actually come to Australia to confront him and uh, he's been on a couple of TV shows and he's been great he actually um. He was due to be on the show with us. He was going to be our first live guest, but his schedule is just so... Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. He, he looked at us and went, no. You're not grumpy enough. <laughs> he, he seems like a really reasonable, quiet guy. Uh, look, to be honest, in fairness, if we had realised he was here a little earlier, we probably would have reached out to him because we, yeah. you know, yeah. it would I have been yeah. to have him on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I would have... Got, if I knew he was here, I would have gone to Federation Square because mm. that's where he was over the last... With the microphone. Yeah. Anyway, if you don't know who um, Billboard Chris is, he's a, he's a Canadian. Up. He's yeah, a Canadian. Definitely look him and up. And I've got a quick little video that explains uh, the chappy. Could you tell us a bit more about what you're doing and why you're here today? Sure. So I travel around the world wearing this sign and the one on my back, which is my definition of a dad, a human male who protects his kids from gender ideology. Mm. And I'm here to have conversations yeah. because... There is a massive child abuse scandal going on all across the Western world where kids are being taught that just because they're a little different, they're struggling, whatever's going on in their life, that maybe it means that they're trans, that they were born in the wrong body, which is a huge steaming pile of rubbish. And we need to abolish this ideology in its entirety, in its entirety but what we really need to do is stop the medical abuse going on with these kids. Children cannot give informed consent to puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and surgeries. We're causing irreversible harm to children and turning them into lifelong pharmaceutical patients. So I'm here to spread the good word. And that's it. It's simple as that. Yep. yep. And he flies around the world um, sending that message out, you know, saying, look, you know, yeah. leave the kids alone. Don't touch them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And of course, um, it's just like every um, uh, city he goes to, He's going to have some confrontation with some people. Hmm. And, um, of course, he came across a lady who dis- disagreed with him, to put it mildly, and um, she happens to have blue hair. So do I need <laughs> to say any more? <laughs> Could be purple. but uh, And this was the exchange on X, or rather oh, at Fed Square. No. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm not a... I wouldn't call myself a turf, but... You wouldn't? No, well, I'm not a radical feminist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. feminist of any kind. 
out here harassing people for the fun of it, or? Do, do I look like I'm harassing people? You're the one harassing. Am I? Do I look like I'm harassing people? <laughs> it looks like you're trying to intimidate How so? people. It looks like you're deliberately trying it to intimidate It looks like I'm trying people. to intimidate people. Yep, absolutely. Because I have a Christian sign saying we shouldn't yourself. give puberty blockers to children? You're That's Christian bullshit to yourself. I'm not a Christian. Why do you think we should sterilize kids? I'm already sterilized. I had my vasectomy, but thank you. <laughs> uh, he seems very pleasant, actually. Yeah, he does. I, I yeah. don't think he's any, had any type of nasty confrontation with him yelling or screaming. People have spat on him, mm. you know, been uh, quite rude to him. And I think that w that's what makes him so good. Yeah. Cause all, and, he, and he says that every time that all he's trying to do is have a conversation. That's mm. it. Yeah. 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 And of course, um, during that week, um, oh no, it happened over a, a period of a couple of weeks. We then had the stabbings in um, Australia. Unfortunately, we had the stabbings in the shopping centre and we had the bishop who um, got mm. stabbed, uh, attacked, and uh, he, he came out all right. He, was, he survived it, you know, he, and he's back. Yeah. He's, he started uh, preaching again, as mm. bishops do. And he's uh, a very fascinating gentleman, uh, Ma Mari Emmanuel. Yep. He's got yeah. his pirate's license. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, white pirate. And one of the things was that um, he's, even though uh, Albo and the rest of the um, mischievous crew have been trying to censor everybody, and even though he got stabbed, he's actually come out and said, do not take that down. Yeah. You know, don't take the videos down. This is part of freedom of speech. Yep. And um, this is what he had to say. Um, oh, what, about... A day or so, two days ago? Mm. Let's have a look. I am a true blue Aussie. I am a proud to be an Australian. And wherever I go, wherever I travel, across the globe, when I come back here, this is home. And I said it. I am very proud of these great Anzac warriors who gave their life up to the very human rights to the very freedom of speech and freedom of religion. They died to keep and preserve the human identity and integrity. I salute my beloved Anzac warriors and whoever walks in that path must be saluted. And this is why I stand for that freedom of speech and freedom of religion. Every human has the right to the freedom of speech and, and freedom of religion. Every human being, no matter who that is, everyone has the right. God bless you. I've kept you for too long, but this is my normal me again. <laughs> <laughs> Very powerful words. Yeah, aren't they? it's a great speech, actually. Yeah. And, you know, that's the, I wouldn't say surprising, but that's, that's I think, a trait of a, a good man. Yeah. That, you know, it's like families where, they lose a young one to a shooting, and yet they still forgive the shooter. Mm. Um, and he he almost lost an eye, and he still mm. says, "We need freedom of speech. You know, yeah. don't take down the video. Yeah. Let everyone see it." You know? And um, sadly, the government <laughs> are yeah. going to govern. Yeah, you know? that's right. Well, like I said, as soon as you take away free speech, you know, anyone out there who wants to know about Russia and Ukraine, you're not going to know anything. Anyone who wants to know about Palestine and Israel you don't yeah. want to know anything yeah you know you just yeah free speech just limits your mm. knowledge mm. you know in, I wonder what's going to happen over yeah, the preventing next, free yeah. speech I should say yeah I wonder what's going to happen over <clears> the next <throat> year or so it's going to be very interesting because it's starting to get heavy handed the government yeah. so when's our next mm. when's our next election here? I think it's next year mm. yeah but I, I think it's a couple of months away where the deadline is uh, before he can call an early election, something mm. like that. Yeah. So, who, so 100% with the Australian government. So who steps up and takes over from Elbow if he walks through a car park? <laughs> oh, no. It wasn't me. No, we, we, are, we are so getting visited by... <laughs> I know. We're going to get a phone call, aren't yeah. we? Sorry, guys. I'm just no, we're only kidding. We're, we're funny here. We'll try to be. Yeah. Anyway, all right. So, of course, Elbow... But, since we're on the subject of Elbow, he's gone out uh, over the weekend and he's decided to um, attend a, a rally yep. uh, of violence against women. And oh, I'll play this video and basically he lied because that's what he does. And he, he, he said that he, um, how can I put it, he, they, 
let me play it for you because <laughs> it's, it's fascinating. To be clear, we did ask to speak, myself and Katie, and we're told that that wasn't possible, and that's fine. I respect the organisers' right to lie. do that. That's a full out lie. To do that. We're here today to demand that governments of all levels must do better, including my own, including every state and territory government. We're here as well to say that society and Australia must do better. We need to change the culture, we need to change attitudes. We need to change the legal system. We need to change the approach by all governments. She seems pretty upset. She is, she was crying and um, then he yeah. just ignored her after that. Yeah. So there you go. there's a bit of violence against women. Yeah, so, psychological. Uh, basically, what do you say that? Um, well, it is. Let's let's be real. It's psychological violence yeah. against women. It yeah, really yeah, well, yeah. No, absolutely. Classic agree. example of what he's fighting yeah. against, or apparently fighting against. Because he was saying that he wasn't invited, uh, wasn't asked to speak, and um, which is what she, well, what she got they, so upset. Yeah, I think he said they were told they couldn't. Speak. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, and that's what she got so upset about it, and it turned into a kerfuffle yeah. because of that. But Elbow's going to do what Elbow's going to do. But look, at the same time, you know, you know me, I don't always finish on that specific view. Um, violence in Australia is yeah. it's escalating. Like, mm. I, I had a set of plans cross my desk the other day for a, um, a family violence court that's specifically for family violence. Mm. And I thought, gee, that's odd because we have courts that, you know, we have, we've got one in the city of Melbourne that, handles you know family is family court um but this was specifically for family violence yeah and i thought gee we're getting to a point where we need a court specifically for that yeah and then i mentioned that to someone else i know and they said yeah there's about eight of them now mm. what so they and they've all come up in the last couple of years i was look, going back through some some information i, I looked up and most of those family violence courts have you know, there's there's more coming, and most of them have only popped up in the last few years. Yeah, it's quite a string of them. Well, Surprising. family vi violence, uh, you can't just touch on. It. Isn't just physical violence. Oh, of course. It's, al it's also yeah. psychological violence. It's um, material violence in the sense you're breaking their properties. Yeah. Uh, and, and that type of thing. It, it's a big gamut of uh, area of uh, violence now. Absolutely, yeah. and it does work both ways. Yeah, you know, there's absolutely. This, this still, you know, it's still some people have that idea that you know. It's like you can only be racist one way. You can only have violence one Correct. way. So if a man Correct. hits a woman, that's that's you know physical abuse and violence. But if a woman hits a man, he yeah. shouldn't go telling the police. He should just toughen up. Well, that's not how it's supposed to work. No. Because, you know, what's that hit? A slap in the face or a frying pan to the back of the head? I mean, it's, where, do you, where do you draw the line? You shouldn't draw the line at any point there. The line should have been drawn at the very start, mm. and that's that's the same for both sexes. And we've got some amazing organisations here for all that sort of stuff, like Beyond Blue and things like yeah. that. So, yeah, yeah, but um, yeah. Okay, well, let's finish up this little segment on Elbow mm. with one more video, and <laughs> this is really funny because simple minds, you know, uh, small things, you know, yeah. all that type of thing. Yep. Let's have a look at Elbow. Very he sounded like Joe Biden then. You know, and the thing. <laughs> and the thing, yeah. All, all simple think, minds think, and the... I think I've been watching the, too and much the Biden. <laughs> and the thing, yeah. The simple minds and the yeah. small, you know. Yeah. Well, he's kind of excited about his tie and, uh, yeah, you've got to watch this. <laughs> How chuffed Anthony Albanese is about his tie. He wants to show it off to everybody. I was filming him yesterday at Box Hill for a Chinese New Year's celebration and it's the year of the rabbit and his tie's red with lots of little rabbits and he needs to show everyone. Look at it. Oh, yeah, nice sir. Very good. Oh, here's number three. What's that? Oh, rabbits on the tie. <laughs> Thumbs up, sir. And then after Thumbs up, we get a little chef's kiss. He's so pleased. Look at that face. I had to ask him about it. Was the tie on purpose or were you just supporting the rabbit eyes? No, it's a bunch of red with bunnies. Perfect. Those were some... 
I heard about that. I thought it was a cartoon. Uh, you know, someone had done a cartoon. Yeah. I didn't realise that was real. <laughs> oh, how embarrassing. That's uh, that's like, you know, when little Johnny, you know, says something to the teacher. Yeah. And, oh, this, oh, that's nice, Johnny. Very good. Go back to what you were doing. <laughs> so, that's exactly how it looked. They're all like, oh, yeah. yes, nice tie. Now yeah. back to what we were doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, um, oh, he was just so excited about that tie, wasn't he? He's like a five-year-old. What was on there? Was there rabbits on there? Was Must there? have been rabbits. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Year of the rabbit. I don't know. But you had to show three I wonder, people. What if yeah. they were going at it, the rabbits? He might have two so ties tomorrow. Look at my tie with these rabbits having sex. <laughs> oh, very good. He will have, have two uh, two ties tomorrow and a bow tie. <laughs> About eighty ties by the end of the week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look, we've got a couple more videos. Uh, we're just having a bit of fun because you know we like to finish off on a light yeah, absolutely. mood. Yeah, absolutely. Next one is um, a guy. A guy I actually wasn't a big fan of originally. I loved. I loved him as an actor in the movies, but he came out really abrasive for, uh, over it, um, over his opinions. Yep. And I kind of warmed to him because I just loved his attitude. And uh, it's Michael Rappaport. Okay. Yeah, he's done quite a few movies. He's in Fallout. Yep. Yeah. I know who yeah. About, yep. And um, the biggest role I've seen him that I liked him was in that series Justice. Um, he played that um, crocodile hunter, alligator hunter, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Out in um, the swamps of Florida. I think it was Florida. And um, he's very ab- abrasive, like I said. And he, he loves to call Trump uh, pig dick. <laughs> <laughs> and he absolutely hates Trump. Absolutely hates him. I don't know how many videos I've, I've seen, but it's every second word's the F bomb with Michael Rappaport. And he, yeah, you're a fucking, and, and you know, it's C words, everything. He's yeah. full on. He's absolutely full on. Then re- just recently, he started to turn the tide a bit and he's starting to warm towards Trump because he's realized, you know, things aren't going as well. He actually said that, I, 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 I paraphrase that. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Trump is on the table now. I may vote for him. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Trump is on the table. Yeah. That's how much he's changed. And when you see his early videos, he is, a, you know, TDS, you know, yep. um, a complete case of it. Anyway, so his latest video and um, the situation was happening with all the uh, Palestine protests and all that, he's starting to think, you know, it. Trump's going to win, basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is his last video. I'm going to play this for you because it's really funny. You know what's going to be? You know what's going to be great when f-ing Donald Trump gets elected, and I ain't saying I'm voting for him, but when he does win, and he's going to win, the screaming and yelling that you f-ing f-ing ass, low <laughs> job, miserable <laughs> on college campuses are doing now. The screaming that you're doing at Jews about free Palestine, the screaming that you're doing at Zionists is going to be nothing compared to the screaming you're going to be doing come November when (laughs) Donald Trump wins. That's been so loud. (laughs) Because of you. Because of you. And historically, Google me. You know how I feel about (laughs) Donald Trump. But it would be worth the screaming, the crying, and the yelling. I can't wait to see those protests come November. Stain Donald Trump wins because of you little blowjobs. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. He's right, though. Remember that? Yeah. Remember when he got in the first time and that, that there was one girl who gets down and kneels. I think she's wearing glasses. And it's been like played a gazillion times ever since. There's the girl screaming. I don't remember. remember? Yeah, it's, like, it's really famous. I, can't, I don't know. Yeah. She's probably, I'm sure she has a name. Her, yeah. mother, her mother and father probably gave her a name, but I couldn't tell you what it is. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it was like, I think she's wearing a beanie and glasses and she's screaming. It's a really famous, like, been turned, look it up. turned into a million things. Yeah, no, yeah, I've yeah, seen, yeah. Anyway, seen it. I'm sure most of you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. not seen it. Um, so we're going to head over to YouTube because we've got one more uh, video to go, and this is the link that you sent me. Mm. Now I heard about it, but I hadn't seen anything about it. Yeah. Did you want to introduce us to this 
Oh yeah, well that's a very I, scary thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we're talking about the Robo Dog. Yeah, yeah. So Boston Dynamics, um, as we know, if anyone knows anything about Boston Dynamics, you would have seen some of the stuff that they've created in the way of robots and and things. And so they've got their their Robo Dog. Now I think they were using them in um, was it Los Angeles or one of the police departments in America? They've 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 started using a couple of them but the whole yep. the whole idea of them was they would be placed in places like say a train station and i'm sure this technology is around the world with cars but like here in australia when you drive down the road and you drive past a police car the police car is scanning every single vehicle's yeah. registration looking yeah, for particular correct. things yeah, correct so they were going to set these dogs up with facial recognition so they'd go somewhere like you know a public space um, and just sit there and scan people and then they could report back if they'd seen somebody and they'd become part of the police force and the police were going to equip them with different, you know, functionality. So um, this this video came out of this of this uh, robo dog and I think it's pretty funny. Yeah. F- funny. Well, not funny, <laughs> but funny in the way that it's kind of scary. Yeah, it, ter- it terrified me when I yeah, saw it. Yeah. So, okay, let's head over to YouTube and have a look at this um, cute little dog. Yeah, everyone wants a cute puppy. I am become death. The destroyer of worlds. Anyway, how many do yeah. you want to order? Well, I don't know, but um, yeah, if it's, they're coming for you if you stand up mm. for free speech, apparently. But um, I think they they should um send them out to the protesters. But I believe that um, I may mis may misunderstand this, but I believe they're trying to get the cost to the police department and what have you down to about ten thousand dollars a unit. Jeez. With a flamethrower? No, as a basic unit. Oh, right, and then okay. you add the flamethrower. Yeah. <laughs> or a machine gun or a whatever you want. Mm. Throwing ninja stars, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. you want it to do. Um, yeah, I can't... I, Ten grand. I mean, it, it sounds too cheap, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. just a bunch of mechanics with some programming. True, true but they was, but they, they've they been around for a while. Because they they've used, been for they while, used yeah. them in China during the lockdowns. Yeah. And they were going around and they had That's drones right. on the back of them. Yeah. All sorts of menacing things. So. But they're supposed to be, you know... They're not supposed to function in that manner. They were never. They were never. Well, that was a theory. They were mm. never going to get used for that sort of stuff. But, you know. mm. of course they will. Of course they will. Yeah. Anyway, that's our show. Very um, good. Oh, did we want to do a movie? We can. We got time to chuck in one movie. Yeah, let's chuck it in. But let's you're going to have to tell me what it is because right, I've got go. queued it Leg- up. <laughs> Legends of the White Dragon. Oh, I haven't heard of that one. Legends. Well, you know me. Every week, I just pull one out of my backside that I've spotted <laughs> I haven't yeah. even seen it myself I've just heard that it was half decent alright so let's, let's make have a our look own at this, um, official trailer so what we like to do while Greg's uh, finding that is find one that someone has tipped us off to and said you've got to go check Stand this it. out and then we decide for ourselves whether it's worth it or not so right. these aren't things we're saying we've, we've seen already and think are great into so. work studio the web plot um Okay, we've got a bit of, a bit of an ad going. Oh, okay, so we've got an so, ad. So yeah, we just well, while we wait for the ad. Yeah, we just kind of skip through it right, which is right now, and um, so there's a new, um, new yep. Exorcist movie. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. heard about Have it. Have you yeah. seen that yet? Um, they did a new Exorcist. <coughs> didn't they do a sequel to that as well? A sequel to the new one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't seen the new one because the first one bombed so badly. That and they had a contract, so they had to do a second one, yeah, which right. bombed. Now they're trying to sell off the rights. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> it's a I mean, of all sorry, the, I brought it up. Yeah, of, of all the movies to bomb yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> well, we talked the other week about horror movies and stuff, and you were saying that you know yeah. you don't like the suspenseful sort of stuff. I don't like the occulty, religiony type of horror stuff. So The Exorcist is one of those yeah. movies that just phew, yeah. I end up walking out the room halfway through. I can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I can add a lot of stuff, but that's just one of those. Wow. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, I was actually curious about whether the new. I I, I deliberately didn't see the new ones because I don't want to ruin the old one. Yeah, no, I understand that. So, but yeah. Um, we're going to head over to YouTube. Let's check it out and uh, have a look at the video. Yeah. 
prophecy tells of a duel between the two dragons of a shared crystal. We must join together to prevent the schemes of evil men. Eric Reed, there is so much you don't know. All that matters is that you are now a white dragon. The spirit you fight is still strong within you. You took everything from me! You can't change the past. You have to let it go. No! All you can do is show up now. Well, let's see what we're working with. Where is Eric Reed? Hmm. I've never heard of it. I could sort of take it or leave it. It feels a bit sort of... Generic? Yeah. Yeah. Star Wars crossed with <laughs> martial uh, arts. Oh, we know, we know the reputation Star Wars has now. So, <laughs> okay, yeah. old, old Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't even know if it's old Star Just Wars. Just reminded me that bit where it was... That flying globe reminded me of, you know, when Luke Skywalker's got the helmet on. Mm. <laughs> ah, yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. yeah, it feels like it was a few little cliche things in it, but I don't know. When was it due out? Did you see when it was due out? Oh, no. Oh, let me just... 2024? Yeah. That's it. That's all it says. Yeah, it feels like a stocking filler. Yeah. You know, it's not the main prize. But, oh, well, if you like that sort of thing... Could be a sleeper hit. Who knows? Okay, maybe not. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well. I'll take you with Anyway. You're the movie buff. (laughs) I'm such a movie buff, I didn't even know this existed. (laughs) There you go. It shows how... how, Uh, how much traction it's getting it's not even on the radar just maybe it wasn't that important it'll be anyway. one of those cult classics like uh, Mortal Kombat <laughs> is, this, is Mortal Kombat a cult well yeah, yeah. No, my, my classics my cult classics would be something like Buckaroo Ban- Banzai oh yeah in the 8th dimension you know things like that yeah not my, my cult classic would be Rocky Horror Picture Show or something like that it's yeah like, even though it was big in the mainstream but yeah, yeah I know but what you like, mean yeah. it's like low budget yeah. Not extremely well made, yeah. but still picked up a hell yeah. of a crowd, you know. So, yeah. yeah. But anyway, there you go. Yeah. Oh, there you go. We're done for the show. We Thank you indeed. for sticking around to the end. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, share the video. Yep. And, um, and thank you to our new producer, JD, for stepping yeah. in today. We have uh, a new producer. Yeah, fantastic. We indeed. We didn't burn the place down, so that's no, a good start. A really good start. Yeah. And we didn't have any beep. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from him.